بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بنرحب فيكم في محاضرة رقم 17 في محاضرات الـ Digital Signal Processing إجراءات إشارية رقمية اليوم رح نتكلم عن موضوع جديد تول من التولز المهمة في الـ DSP اللي هو الـ Z أو الـ Z Transform الـ Z The Z transform. The Z transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform. فهو أعم من الفوريا ترانسفورم زي ترانسفورم زي ترانسفورم for discrete time signals is the counterpart the counter part of the Laplace counterpart of the Laplace transform for continuous time signals يعني مقابل لابلاس ترانسفورم او الاس دومين في عندنا الزي الزي دومين usually what we have before we took the DTFT the discrete Fourier discrete time Fourier transform and we knew that there are some uh, sequences that they do not have a Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform Fourier transform does not converge for all sequences. As an example for this, we know that if, if you have x of n equals alpha to the power n mu of n such that magnitude of alpha is greater than or equal 1, then this sequence, this sequence does not have A Fourier transform. So it does not have a Fourier transform, uh, but it has it has. A Z as we will see uh, later in the discussion okay so let's define the Z transform based on this so we need the generalization for the Fourier transform for the sequences that they do not have a Fourier transform we need an extra tool a generalized tool to use it and the Z transform is this generalized form of the transformation. So the definition definition of Z transform. The Z transform of a sequence 
x of n is defined as x of z equals to summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity x of n times z to the minus n okay and we call this also as z of x of n so as an operator like f of x of n for the Fourier transform z of x of n as z transform and we also can say that we have Fourier transform pair so you have the z and you have here x of z okay just to look at the z operator in a more depth way remember that in the s plane for the continuous in the s plane you have here sigma and here you have j omega this is for the continuous laplace the s plane for the laplace transform while for the discrete form we have the z So the Z plane is also a complex quantity. So for the Z plane, you have the real part of Z, and you have here the imaginary part of Z. So the Z is a complex quantity. This is for the Z transform. Not only this, we have any point here has also a magnitude of R and an angle of omega. So this is R e to the j omega. This is equals to our z. So z here is equal to the magnitude of R and the angle is the angular uh, the uh, frequency is omega, so this is r e to the j omega. This is the quantity. And we can also, any value of r is the real of r plus the imaginary of r. So any particular r, uh, sorry, z, is equal to the real of z1 plus the imaginary j times the imaginary of z1 or we can say z1 is equal to r1 e to the j omega 1 real this is in the <laughs> rectangular form form of the complex quantity and this is the polar form form of the complex quantity. So any complex quantity in the Z plane is the magnitude and the magnitude of Z one is equal to R1. Okay, the phase of Z1 is equal to omega 1. Okay. Okay. So if, if we look at the x of z again is equal to the summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity, x of n, and instead of z, I'm going to put r, r e to the j omega to the minus n. If we expand the power, then we, we will get the following x of z is equal to the summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity, x of n r to the minus n, 
the whole thing multiplied by e to the minus j omega n. So the Z transform looks like a Fourier transform of not x of n, but rather than x of n times some r to the minus n. This is the Z transform. Now, for the magnitude of Z equals 1, which is equal to r, then we have the Fourier transform. So the actually the Fourier transform is the Fourier transform is the evaluation is the evaluation of x of z at the unit circle. Okay, so if you evaluate this at the unit circle, you can find the Fourier transform. Remember that when we used the Laplace transform, the S-plane, this was sigma and this was j omega and s is equal to sigma plus j omega. If we evaluate h of s or the Laplace transform over the j omega axis, you get the Fourier. So evaluation of the Fourier transform is the evaluation of x of s at the j omega axis. So in the continuous domain, In the continuous domain, the Fourier transform was the evaluation of X of S at the j omega axis. Yeah. So you substitute sigma equals zero, you find the j omega axis, and you get the Fourier transform, okay? <laughs> so. Okay, let's see what will happen. We'll do some examples, look at them, and get some results that we are looking for for the z-transform. I'm going to take, first of all, the following sequence. Let me take a sequence that is right-sided sequence. Right-sided sequence. Okay? Right-sided sequence, let's take x of n equals alpha to the n mu of n. Alpha to the n mu of n. This is a right-sided sequence, starts from n equals zero and goes to the right until infinity. So we call it a right-sided sequence. Alpha to the n mu of n is a right-sided sequence. And our x of z will be the summation. I'm going to substitute x of n directly. Mu of n starts from 0, so n from 0 up to infinity. Alpha to the n, z to the minus n. So this is equals to summation from n equals 0 up to infinity. Alpha z inverse to the power n. And now this is geometric series from 0 to infinity. It has the summation. 1 over 1 minus alpha z inverse, taking into consideration that the magnitude of alpha z inverse should be less than 1. Okay? So it will converge, this summation will converge to this result for x of z if the magnitude of alpha times z inverse magnitude less than 1 or the magnitude of z is greater than the magnitude of alpha. 
the magnitude of z, it's all the points in the z plane that has a magnitude greater than the positive value of alpha. If we put this, this will look like a circle because it's the magnitude regardless of the phase. The magnitude of z regardless of the phase should be equals to magnitude of alpha. So the magnitude of alpha is the radius of this circle. And you are looking of all the points outside this radius. Magnitude of z, it's all the z plane except a circle that has a radius of alpha. Okay? Radius of the magnitude of alpha. Okay, this is very important result because we said that x of z has a convergent. It converges to this result given that you are evaluating x of z in points outside this circle. Well, all those points, they converge. Points inside this circle, they diverge and does not have an x of z inside this circle. So, uh, if I'm going to take an example for this and show you the importance of this result here. Actually, this result where the uh, x of z has a value for the magnitude of z greater than alpha, we call it the region of convergence. So the region of convergence, show abbreviated ROC, ROC. The ROC here is the magnitude of alpha greater than the mag. Sorry, the magnitude of z is greater than the magnitude of alpha. This is our region of convergence for this problem. So x of z exists and it is equal to this value, given that the ROC is magnitude of z greater than greater than alpha. Uh, as an, an example for this, if I'm, I'm going to take x of n, let's say, equals 2 to the n nu of n. Basically, the Fourier transform does not exist for this one because the magnitude here, alpha here, is equal to 2. Yeah? So here, alpha equals 2, which means that our x of z here is equal to 1 over 1 minus 2 z inverse. Okay, and the ROC is magnitude of Z is greater than 2, which is a circle. So you are outside this circle of a radius of 2. So this is our ROC, a region of convergence for this example for a right sided sequence like this is here. While the Fourier transform does not exist here, the Fourier does not converge. But the x of z exists and it's equal to this one. And you can see that in, in the summation, when we apply this x of z, we know that the x of z is equal to the summation of 2 to the n times z to the minus n from n equals 0 to infinity and this is equals to the summation of 2 z inverse to the power n from n equals 0 to infinity. This is our x of z. If you look at this from mathematical point of view you can see that this is 2 over z to the power n from n equals 0 to infinity. So 2z inverse, it's 2 over z. Now, if I am outside this region here, then the magnitude of this z is greater than 2. So 2 over something greater than 2 is less than 1. So the whole r here is r to the power n. So my r, which is summation of r to the n from n equals 0 to infinity. This r now, if we choose z to be in this region, 
So definitely this R magnitude of R is less than one. And this is why we have a convergence. If you go inside the tomb, let's say, if you pick a value of, let's say one, okay? So if two over one, this is two, to the power n, so within the circle, you don't have a convergence, and x of z does not exist, okay? This is why we have a very important parameter here for x of z, which is the region of convergence. So both of them, they are, it's a counterpart or uh, it's a, a pair. X of z always should be teamed with a region of convergence uh, where the x of z exists and uh, it has a value, otherwise it diverges. Okay, so this is the right-sided sequence. And this is some of the points that we mentioned here about the region of convergence, convergence, which is very important here. I'm going to take another sequence, another example, which is the left-sided sequence. So we we'll take the left-sided sequence. I'm going to take special sequence here, x of n equals minus a or alpha to the power n minus alpha to the power n mu of minus n minus 1. So this sequence starts from minus infinity up to minus 1 and it has this value minus alpha to the power n and I need to find x of z for this sequence. x of z is equal to the minus sign is a constant, so it goes outside the summation. Summation from n equals minus infinity up to minus 1, alpha to the n, z to the minus n. I'm going to reverse the index and call let m equals minus n. So x of z is equal minus, it's affected the index only, so this is from n equal, m equals 1 up to infinity, alpha to the minus m, z to the power m. Okay? I'm going to recall this once again and put it in the form of n again so that you don't you are not confused so this is from n equals 1 to infinity i'm gonna rename m by n so this is alpha to the minus n z to the power n okay just to reverse the indices and rename the indices and we have this so this is i'm gonna add an index for this one for the index n equals 0, so this is alpha to the power 0, z to the power 0, so it is equal to 1 with a minus sign, and so I'm going to add minus 1 inside, plus 1 outside, so you have 1 minus summation from n equals 0 to infinity, alpha to the minus n, z to the n, and take a common 1 minus summation from n equals 0 to infinity, alpha inverse z, the whole thing to the power n. Okay? Let this summation will converge if the magnitude of alpha inverse z is less than 1. So the convergence will be x of z has a value and it will converge 1 minus 1 over 1 minus alpha inverse z, given that alpha inverse z magnitude is less than 1. So this is, if we take this value, so magnitude of z is less than the magnitude of alpha. This is our ROC. The region of convergence is here, and it is this is magnitude of alpha, and this is our ROC. The region of convergence is inside the circle, not outside the circle in this case. But let, let's just manipulate, manipulate this x of z. Take a common factor, 
1 minus alpha inverse z. You have 1 minus alpha inverse z minus 1. So this one will be cancelled. And let's divide the whole thing by uh, minus alpha inverse z. So if minus alpha inverse z divided by minus alpha inverse z and divide here by 1 minus alpha inverse z divide the whole thing by minus alpha inverse z so you end up with 1 over 1 minus alpha z inverse okay this is exactly the same answer that we got for the right-sided sequence that we had before this is exactly the same x of z the only difference between them is that for the right-sided sequence that we have in the first example the magnitude of or the roc was outside outside the circle the magnitude or the roc here for this example is the magnitude of z is less than the magnitude of alpha so this is inside the circle we can conclude here that if you have a right-sided sequence then you have a region of convergence from certain circle boundary and outside going to infinity if you have a left-sided sequence then you have exactly the same answer but the region of convergence is in is within a circle of a radius of magnitude of of alpha okay okay let's expand this to another example <coughs> And see what will happen. Okay. Another example is a sum of two exponential sequences let's say that x of n is equal to one half to the power n mu of n plus minus one third to the power n mu of n so this is a two exponentials two right-sided sequences they start from zero and above uh, see what we'll have for x of z so our x of z by the definition is the summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the minus n and we will apply this summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity one half to the power n mu of n plus minus one third to the power n mu of n times z to the minus n z to the minus n so this is the this is my x of n z to the minus n expand the summation over the, the two terms so this is a summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity one half to the power n mu of n z inverse z, sorry z to the minus n plus summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity minus one third to the power n mu of n z to the minus n now I'm going to replace mu of n by the indices from 0 to infinity. So because mu of n is uh, the, our values uh, of 1s from 0 to infinity. So this is summation from n equals 0 to infinity. 1 half to the n z minus n plus summation from n equals 0 to infinity minus one third to the n z to the minus n so 
So for, you have two summations, both of them should converge so that the, the whole answer will converge. Uh, so x of z is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 half z inverse plus 1 over 1 plus 1 third z inverse. This one should converge if the magnitude of z is greater than 1 half. And should, this one should be converged of the magnitude of z is greater than one third, because it's the absolute value of minus one third. One third. Okay. Uh, so x of z has convergence for the region for the overlap of the region. So the region of convergence is the region of overlap. The region of convergence is the region of overlap. Okay? And we can see that the first one has a radius of one-third, the second one has a radius of one half and for the first one it's from one half and above so this is our region of convergence for the first term outside it's a right sided sequence outside this region okay the second one is the region of convergence is outside this region So the overlap is ROC is equal to ROC1 intersection ROC2. So the region of convergence is the overlap of the two regions. And the ROC here, magnitude of Z is greater than the outermost circle, which is one half. Okay. This is the region of convergence for this example. So this is the answer for this example, and this is the region of convergence for such an example. Two right-sided sequences, we take the outermost radius, and outside this radius is, outside this circle, with this radius is our ROC. Okay. I'm going to take now one more example. Two-sided exponential sequences. Okay. We'll take x of n equals to minus one-third to the power n new of n. So this is a right-sided sequence, but the next one is minus one-half to the power n mu of minus n minus one. We know that for <coughs> from the previous example, another point that we can deduct from the previous example is that uh, uh, Sorry, that another point that we conduct from the previous example is that uh, linearity. We had two parts and we distributed the Fourier, uh, sorry, the Z transform over both of them and we find the Z transform for each part of them. So this one has two parts. The first one is minus one third to the power n mu of n, and this has the Z transform which is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 third z inverse and the magnitude of z is greater than 1 third. This is a right-sided sequence outside a circle with a radius of 1 third. The next one is minus 1 half to the power n mu of minus n minus 1. And this has the z transform of 1 over 1 minus 1 half the inverse, but you know, the 
magnitude of the, the region of convergence here is less than one half. So <laughs> for the whole X of Z that is made of those two components, it should be the region, the overlap region of convergence. So uh, X of Z is equal to one over one plus one third Z inverse plus one over one minus one half Z inverse. If you look at those two, they are the same, but what is the region of convergence here? The region of convergence, you have a circle here of one third, then you have another circle here of one half. This one from one third and above, so this is our ROC from for the one third and above. Okay. And the ROC for the other one is from one half and inside. So and you can see that the overlap is the magnitude of z. This is true for the magnitude of z is greater than one third, less than one half. Okay, so this is our region. Our region of convergence is the where the two colors overlap, and this is the So this is our region of convergence. The, the ring that is made between the two circles of radius one third and one half. So this is our ROC for this sequence. This is our ROC for this sequence. Look at them, they are totally, both of them are two different sequences with the same X of Z, but with, with different uh, region of convergences. Please be careful because later on we will use tables to go back and find the inverse of the ROS, uh, the, the X of Z, the inverse Z transform by inspection. We will look at terms like this, knowing that you have this region of convergence, you, have, you, you can go back and construct X of N, knowing that this is your region of convergence, then you can reconstruct x of n by this x of z and this region of convergence you can go back and construct x of n based on the region of convergence and x of z itself okay Okay, let's continue with the Z transform now. Let's take another example. If my X of N is equal to Delta of N, then what will be my Z transform? The Z transform here is one, yeah, because this X of Z is equal to the summation of Delta of N z to the minus n from n equals minus infinity to infinity and this is equals to z of minus zero and this is equals to one z to the power zero z is equals to one and the roc here is all z plane all the z plane the whole z plane okay one more example what if x of n equals to shifted delta of n minus m? So this is equals to z to the minus m. And here the ROC is all z except zero. 
if m is greater than zero, or infinity if m less than zero. So if m is greater than zero, it's one over z infinity diverge. So if you have one over zero, it's infinite. So the z transform does not exist. Uh, if you have a positive m, so if m is less than zero, so you have z to the minus minus value, which is a positive value. So the infinity itself does not is not included within the uh, region of convergence. Okay, one more example. If we have x of n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, this is just an example to demonstrate a finite length sequence. And let's assume that this is our 0 here. So my x of 0 sorry, x of z is equal to 1, this is in the index of minus 1, so this is 1 times z to the power 1, plus 2 times z to the power 0, plus 3 times z to the minus 1, plus 4, z minus 2, plus 5, z minus 3. So this is equals to z, plus 2, plus 3, z inverse plus 4, z minus 2 plus 5, z minus 3. And you look at this, it's a very nice polynomial. It has positive power, which means that you have a negative index. You have negative powers, which means that you have positive indices. And the ROC here is all z except because you have positive power, this one goes with infinity, so infinity is not included. You have a negative power, so it's one over z, so zero is also is not included. So except z equals zero and z equals infinity. So this is our region of convergence, okay? So with this, we conclude our lecture about the Z-transform. We will discuss further issues regarding the Z-transform and the region of convergence in the next coming lectures. Thank you for being with me, and I hope you will find this lecture interesting.